Perfect. Hey, thank you all for coming out. Appreciate it very much. Excited to uh, start another season. Uh, a lot of familiar faces in this room. We know each other pretty well now, but uh, our guys have done a tremendous job uh, starting back in January when they got back in school and the work that they've put in throughout spring ball, uh, throughout what they've done in the weight room. And then, you know, really even the little break that we had in the month of May when they get out of school and uh, they did a great job of continuing to work, came back for summer in great shape. And uh, Eric Anthony and his staff have done a tremendous job with our guys. They look great. They're running well. Um, you see vast improvements as guys continue to grow. And I think that's what you're going to see out of our football team as we enter this fall. Um, we've got a lot of young guys that we've had to play over the last couple of years that are now got a little bit more experience about them. Uh, been in some battles, been in some wars, um, and now understand uh, what it takes and what it looks like. Uh, we got nine guys coming back on defense. I'm extremely excited about that. Those guys have gelled well together. Uh, you know, we changed schematically a little bit last year for what we were doing in, in the years previous. Uh, now with Coach Young's retirement, which I uh, wish him all the best and, and appreciate everything he's done for myself and for our program. Uh, now with Coach Gillespie taking over our defensive coordinator position, I've got nothing but faith and confidence in him and excited about you know the little twists and, and changes that are happening within our defense, within our scheme of what we're doing. But there's always growth and, and uh, the ability to make something better uh, that, that we're looking for each and every day as we approach the field. And then offensively, uh, I know all of you are going to ask about the quarterback part of it, so those guys are in a great battle. Um, but I feel more confident in our quarterbacks than I felt in a long time. Just we've got a little bit of experience in the room. We've got a great room as far as their knowledge of the game and what they're wanting to do and, and what we have to do as an offense. Our receivers are starting to grow up, and, and I see a lot of growth in them throughout the summer from a leadership standpoint, uh, as well as what they're doing and putting on the field. Um, so. As we look forward to our season, we know we have an extremely, extremely tough schedule. Um, it, it, from the get, you've got to be on top of your game. You've got to be ready to play. Uh, we're going to be tested early. Uh, we know that as we get into our conference, our conference continues to grow and get better. And, and when you're starting to talk about the amount of talent in our league uh, from a player standpoint and a coaching standpoint, uh, I would put our conference against any of them. Uh, from top to bottom. So uh, every week we got to come out and be ready to play. Every week we've got to continue to get better. Our young guys have got to continue to keep growing and we got to keep gelling as a team. But uh, with spring over and now fall camp right here on us, uh, we're excited to get back on the field with them and go to work and, and start to be able to put them through drills and, and see them move and react and do the things that we need to do to prepare ourselves uh, for a great uh, season this year. With that, I'll open it up for questions. John. So, uh, Philip, you, you've got a lot of starters back, a lot of uh, impact players in a lot yeah. of positions. Uh, you mentioned the quarterback race is not necessarily one of them. You've got a competition there. Offensive line is not another one right. where you've got players competing. How's the, how do you expect that to shake out on the offensive line? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm really encouraged by the depth and the – talent that we have on our defensive line. And so those offensive line guys had to go against that every day. Um, and it was a battle. I mean, there were some good days and some bad days throughout it. But our guys grew a lot, uh, gained a lot through that competition. We're going to get some more of that, obviously, as we get into fall camp. You know, Chris Ivey's got to lead us. I mean, he's really our true returning starter. Chris Paul, in my opinion, is a returning starter. We have several guys with, a, with some experience. Uh, coming back, whether you're talking about uh, Dylan Couch or you're talking about Tillers, a lot of those guys got a lot of playing time last year, especially after the loss of, of Tyler Bowling, you know, halfway through the season. So um, it's making those guys gel together. Um, I think, ex you know, X is going to be a great addition at the right tackle part of it. Um, we're not going to have the depth up front that we really need at this point, some of that due to injury and other things. Um, but I'm excited about the way those guys are working and the talent I think that we do have up front. You mentioned being more confident in your quarterbacks than you have been in a mm -hmm. while. Um, whether it's Zach or Seth, 
it, your offense didn't really look like your offense for a lot of the last two years. I mean, mm -hmm. do you feel like you can get back to looking the way it did, you know, your first Well, I hope so. I mean, every year your offense hopefully is going to – we're trying to gear our offense to what we have available to us on the field, right? So, obviously, that's done through recruiting and other things, and you're always looking to continue to upgrade your talent. We do that every year. Um, that being said, we were – the last two years, in my opinion, we were – pretty dang good up front. Um, we were pretty young at some of the skill spots, so you were trying to lean on some of those older guys. I think this year uh, we've got to do a much better job throwing the football and being successfully, uh, throwing it successfully down the field, being more consistent with that. I think our receivers, uh, whether you're talking about Keenan or Keelan, uh, those guys have got to continue to step up and grow and make those plays for us, but uh, there's a lot of things that kind of go into it. So. Uh, yes, we're looking to push the ball again. Uh, we're looking to have uh, the ability to spread it out and use it sideline to sideline and vertically. Uh, that's the plan going in. Now we got to go in and execute it and make those things happen. And the only time you know you can do that consistently is doing it under the lights. You know, we were showing some signs of that, especially later in the year uh, as we were on the practice field. Some of that started translating late in games. You know, a couple of big throws in the SMU game that, that Seth made that I was really happy with. Um, he continued to grow. Uh, if you look at what happened in the spring game, there were some chances for some of those to happen, and they did. So we've got to continue to keep uh, pressing the envelope when it comes to that and getting back to who we really want to be and be fast and explosive and, and making those plays down the field. Along those same lines, um, how important is it to uh, find some receivers beyond, you know, Keelan and Keenan mm -hmm. um, to develop. Is that just a matter of consistency that maybe hasn't been there in the past? Yeah, I think some of it's that. Some of it's been some injury things. But I, I think more importantly, I think some of those young guys this spring got a lot of great reps. Um, you saw some guys growing at the end of last year, and then spring ball came about and, and took another step. And so we got to see that same thing in fall camp. I think there are some young guys that you may not know their names yet, but are going to have some opportunities to make some plays that uh, are going to bring some light to that. So uh, I think we've got a handful of guys that are ready to do that. Now they got to do it under the lights. Yeah, so Coach Gillespie has been here, obviously. But taking over as a new DC, it, it, the defense was a strong point last year. Is, mm -hmm. it, something, is it something he's just going to kind of keep it the same way? Are there little nuances he's changing, tweaking? How's that going to work out? Yeah, I mean, that's probably a better question for him, obviously. But uh, he's going to add his twist to it. We've, we've changed some things. You can see it throughout our spring ball. There's some tweaks and some nuances that he is going to add. Um, as we installed what we did last year, I think even on the defensive side, we were all pretty new to this and, and kind of all right, here's our basis, and this is what we want to base out of, and then continuing to grow and learn throughout it uh, as the season went on. But I think a lot of those jumps that we made defensively from a stat standpoint, let's say, um, you know, a lot of that was we limited some, a lot of things that we had, you know, and, and we got really good at what we were doing, and guys understood it and knew where they fit, knew where they were dropping to, and, and then guys were able to play a lot freer and go make plays. So I think with the development of what we've done schematically and also the development of our players, you know, you got young guys that have stepped up like Travis and others. Um, you know, Cooper, in my opinion, has been extremely consistent over his last couple of years of starting. Uh, you know, Zavin added obviously a huge chunk to that. And then secondary wise, those young guys that we had to play with are now older guys that, that started making plays. So. Uh, it's all about confidence and, and being relentless to the football and, and uh, doing it together. Yeah. Philip, you're not just playing two <clears throat> power fives in the non-conference, but two power fives have done some pretty big things. Yeah, annually in the top 20, if not better. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you feel about that? I mean, is this, it's an opportunity, I realize, for your program. And sure it's it is. great for your fan base. But how, is it, do you compartmentalize that with the fact that that's an awful lot for this program to bite off? You know, considering the last couple of years? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's going to be a tremendous challenge for us, and I think that's the way we have to approach it and look at it. Um, you know, especially when you're you're opening up your season on the road at one of those places, and then, you know, having Oklahoma State at least come to our place, that, that's going to be new at least since I've been here. I, we haven't had that opportunity uh, to have a team like Oklahoma State come to our place. But 
we look at it as a challenge, obviously, but we also look at it as, a, as an opportunity. And uh, we'll get between the white lines. We're going to line up and see what happens. Uh, I know our guys are going to be prepared. I know they're going to be excited. I know they're going to be ready. Uh, now we got to go out and we got to execute at a really high level uh, right from the jump uh, because we don't have any time or any opponents in there to kind of ease our way into anything. Uh, w when we step on the field, we're going to have to play at a really high level immediately. Would you like to see two power fives on future schedules in the non-conference? Well, I mean, that's really out of my hands. I don't get to really choose on any of that stuff. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy being able to, to play fi power five schools. You know, I, I don't. I still kind of think of football kind of in the old terms, right? So um, we were all Division One schools at one point. You know, when we were in the BCS, there wasn't any Power Five, non-Power Five. It was just Division One schools, and we played each other, and you were in different conferences. Uh, but we understand the landscape of college football right now. Right now. Um, if I had my druthers, you know, I would probably play one of those guys, and, and uh, I would find three other preseason games, and then we'd roll into conference because our conference is so difficult. Uh, there's, there's not an opponent in there that, that you think you feel really strongly about that, hey, this is a dub no matter if we just show up on a Saturday, right? Uh, our conference has gotten extremely difficult and extremely competitive, a lot of parity within it. And so at the end of the day, you want opportunities uh, to go play for championships, and you want opportunities to go play for bowl games, and that's what makes your program continue to grow and develop. So when I look at it from that standpoint, yeah, I, I could back off of that a little bit uh, and uh, make sure that, that we're looking at what is the – what are we really wanting at the end of the season. Coach, back here. How soon would you prefer to name a starter at quarterback? I never put a timeline on it, Luke. So – uh, whenever it's the right time, then we'll name it and we'll go from there. John? Nice to meet you, Luke. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Power Five and whatnot, um, we hear every day about somebody in the transfer portal. We hear about how this school is affected by somebody they got in the transfer, who might be in the transfer portal. How does it affect schools like Tulsa? How, how, how have you approached your um, maybe your, uh, I don't know, strategy for scouting the transfer portal? Um, Schools on your level, for instance. Yeah, so we've we've kind of developed our own little system how we're trying to work the portal, and uh, obviously, um, being year one, I, I think we handled the portal correctly. Uh, it's very difficult because it, it's changing all the time, and uh, to be able to try to not only identify a guy that that fits your program or a need that you have in your program, and then you got to figure out why is he on the portal. I mean. Did something bad happen in his past? You got to start making some phone calls. You got to start doing some things to kind of figure out what that is, and then assessing. You know, honestly, for us, can I get him into school? Uh, coming from where he came from, so um, the things on the portal. You know, there's some guys that jump on there and they're off within 24 hours. Uh, there's been many opportunities for us to talk to kids, and then things change immediately because. They may have already had an idea of what they were going to do, and uh, they jump on it, and they're already locked into their new place, and they're not really doing that part of it. So um, we're going to keep using the portal. I, I think it's uh, an opportunity for us when you have injuries or when you have uh, things that happen or you have a kid leave your program. Uh, really hurts you from a depth standpoint as you're starting to develop kids. And so the portal is a way that you can – kind of replace some of those depth issues if we can get them in school and use it the right way and making sure that we're getting the right kids in our program, the ones that can help us but also characterize or what we're looking for. Coach, your evaluation of the American Athletic Conference has pushed to try to get a power six. and We have mm -hmm. many accomplishments over power five teams recently and also the impact of UConn dropping out now. Yeah, I, I think it's a it's a true deal when you start talking about the Power Six part. Um, I think as you uh, see what the history has been over the last couple of years and how, in my opinion, the landscape has changed a little bit, I don't think there's any question. Uh, if you're looking at conferences outside of what they're referring to as the Power Five, we are the next conference. Um, we've had more wins versus those people. Uh, I think the Big Ten is even – 
uh, clarified us as one of those opponents so that they can use that within their scheduling. And um, so I don't think there's a question of that. Um, I think also um, with the ESPN contract that we just had, um, what they've done and stepped up to the plate as far as for our conference um, has been tremendous. And I also think that shows um, where they view us in relation to the landscape of college football. So uh, it's something that continues to grow. Um, I hope at some point uh, we get uh, kind of adopted into that, that mesh and uh, land on our feet and be on even ground with those, those teams and be able to compete uh, re really for the postseason part of it. And that, that's the real, the real nugget of what all this is about. You know, I don't, I don't see it that way. Now, I'm, I'm a little biased, um, but, you know, for UConn, um, I think they are leaning, obviously, towards more of a basketball conference. Um, I don't know really what that entails for their football program, and I don't know that they give, have given it a lot of thought. I'm not in those meetings, but um, I don't know where they go football-wise from this point forward. So. For us, I think we're happy with where we're at right now with, with uh, the teams that are left. And uh, we're not out seeking new uh, membership for our conference. Uh, obviously, people are calling and wanting to be a part of it because uh, they know what this brings and what it carries. Um, but I don't think we're actively searching. We're OK with what we got, and we'll see where it goes from here. You lost both, both kickers. Tell us a little bit about what you got at the kicking game right now. Yeah, you know, we had a, we've got a kid that actually transferred in uh, that's going to walk on for us as a graduate um, transfer. Uh, we've got a couple of young guys that I feel confident about. Those guys have, have been here with us all spring, all summer. Um, obviously, uh, there's a job there to win. And so um, I'm excited to see what they're going to do and what they're going to bring. It's a, such a huge part of the game that kind of gets overlooked so often. You know, Redford did so many things for us and uh, knocked down so many points for us in crucial situations. And so, you know, those guys really don't get talked about enough unless they screw up. And uh, so uh, we've got our punter back. We've got our holder back. We've got our deep snapper back. Uh, we've got to fill in that spot for the field goal extra point guy and the kickoff guy. And uh, I think we've got some good prospects for that. And we'll see how it kind of works its way through uh, fall camp. I got two, sorry. Uh, just the goal going into the season, uh, maybe is it to improve off last season? Is it, a, is it a conference championship? Whatever the goal is, does it change from year to year or do you guys keep it pretty consistent? Pretty consistent, really. I mean, our, our first goal is, is number one, we got to compete every day. And then after that, it's let's, let's get bowl eligible and let's get there as fast as we can get there. Once we get bowl eligible, yes, we have more goals. But once we get bowl eligible, then let's just see where we're at and let's continue to keep working and fighting towards that. You know, just like we did in year two, uh, we had a couple of tough games in there where we were close to being able to play for that deal. Uh, but those guys are going to be hungry. We got to line up and do it every day. And, and, uh, and it's all about us coming together and getting that done. And then, uh, you know, for these guys, uh, you know, the last couple of years, we haven't got to experience that bowl, that bowl season. And, uh, it's important for us to get back to that for them. You know, they put in all this time and work and effort, and uh, I want to see our guys see the payoff of that at the end of the year. Uh, you, we fit on the quarterback situation. We fit on replacing some offensive linemen, but what you don't have to do is replace two running backs. I mean, you have right. both Corey and Shamari back. How big is that for what you're trying to do? Yeah, I think it's a huge deal. I mean, it's, they're, they're a great one-two punch. Uh, I think they, uh, they really work well together. Uh, I think it provides something defensively that they got to prepare for because they run differently. Um, plus, both of those guys, number one, we got to keep them healthy. You know, last year we're kind of banged up back and forth with both of them. If we can keep them healthy, those two guys have been in a lot of games, a lot of wars. They've proven what they can do under the lights. Uh, and uh, we've got to find and continue to find ways to, to get the ball in their hands and, and let them use their God-given ability to help us go win. Speaking of the running backs, Shamari and Corey, a couple years ago had D'Angelo and James. Mm -hmm. What is it about your system, or is it your system, that, that allows two guys to have those kind of seasons and that kind of success? Or has it been almost a, 
luck of the draw, we end up with two talented guys, and we just figure out a way to make it work. No, I, I think it's a plan for us. Now, the, the tough thing is as guys come in, you know, a lot of times they're coming from a high school where they were the guy. So when we ask them to understand what this scenario, I mean, we're going to be running back by committee. We're not going to have a true starter, and we're not going to have a true backup. You're both going to be starters. You're both going to get uh, a lot of touches. Uh, you know, whoever has the hot hand that game is going to get more touches. They understand that, but they really work well together in understanding. In college football, it's difficult uh, for a runner back to stay healthy for a full 12 games or 13 games or 14 games, depending upon what you're going to get to play. So being able to share that load, uh, to be able to stay fresher longer throughout the season, I think they see the benefits of that and now uh, understand how it works and now you know, they're the, they're the ones toting the flag saying, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. Let's make sure that we get it done together. I'm sure, you know, that was tough for Zach having to sit out last year and mm -hmm. watch. We saw him some in the spring game. You saw him come through spring ball. And now I know your time with them in the summer is limited, but I'm sure you get reports. How have you seen him as, uh, you know, a quarterback, you know, which is always kind of a leadership position on the team. How have you seen him kind of grow his personality with regard to that? Yeah, I think from the leadership standpoint, he, he's in, he's right where I want him to be right now. He's not as vocal uh, as uh, maybe he would be after being a starter for a year or after playing a certain amount of games. Uh, I think our guys look to all of our quarterbacks in that sense. Um, you know, I think the number one thing with him sitting out, I think it allowed him, because he's never had this chance, it allowed him to sit back, kind of learn more about the game, see more about the game. But it also gave him a chance to get healthy. I mean, he got here, uh, he's pretty banged up, and uh, it allowed him to really focus in on his body. Uh, EA and those guys in the weight room did a tremendous job of just kind of, hey, we're going to take it at a, a pretty slow pace, make sure that we get a good base and get you back healthy, and then we're going to build you up from there. He looks great right now, as do the rest of those guys. And, um, you know, as I think things continue to grow and we continue to evaluate, those guys, as we get on the field, will take even more of a leadership role and be more vocal in what we do. And... Uh, I think they're handling it right now the way we want them to, and, and I'm happy with that. Hey, Philip, I'm RJ. Hey, RJ, how are you? I'm good, thank you. You mentioned how banged up players have been, and that seemed to be kind of a cruel instance for you guys last season and even in the year prior. Yeah. What has changed specifically in the weight room, in conditioning, to try to get some more injury prevention into what you do from a conditioning standpoint. Yeah, I think, and that's been one of the great things with, with uh, Coach Anthony and his staff. I mean, um, what we're doing now from a training element, I think has really benefited our players. We've got more dynamic movements going on. We're doing a better job of, of using things within our training that are gonna really relate back to the football field from a cutting standpoint, from a weight room standpoint, making sure that we're attacking areas of need. You know. Uh, my third year here is when we had the, the 13 knee injuries. Um, when something like that happens, some of that's just bad luck, obviously, and some of that is you look back at everything you did, everything I did, everything we did training-wise, and how can we do a better job of making sure we're preparing our kids from a body standpoint for the, the amount of cutting and things that are going to happen on the field. So uh, he's done a really good job of, of implementing different lifts, different drills, and making sure that we're preparing our guys to step on the field and be ready to play at a really high level for an extended amount of time. Uh, but I think that's been the biggest key to all of that. You're going into about a week now until players uh, report. What will you do this next few days, if you haven't already prepared it, uh, to talk about f being picked last in the, in the division? with your players when they do get here? Or is it even come up at all? No, uh, you know, first of all, they know they're here. You know, they've seen it. And uh, they've been here working all summer long. So they know they know those predictions and picks and all of that. Um, does it sting? Yes. Um, but every year we've been here, we've been picked pretty low. So uh, it's kind of expected now. And we understand that the only way we're going to gain respect is to go earn it. And uh, the way you do that is in between the white lines and, and getting W's. So um, 
I think our guys are going to approach that the right right way. Is it motivation uh, to an extent? Yes. Um, is it the ultimate motivation? I don't think so. We've got other things on our plate that uh, we've put out there that uh, we want to make sure that we accomplish and do as a team. And uh, I can tell you right now, I, who knows what's going to happen in college football this year? You know, you've got a couple of elite teams up there at the top, but from every stance from that point forward, you know, there's teams that had great seasons last year that uh, were picked pretty bad and vice versa. Teams that were picked really high that had terrible seasons. So going into it, um, it's about what you do each and every week, and we're going to control what we can, which is focus on our opponent and ourselves as we work our way through it. Okay. Can you see your video board from where you are right now? You got, an, you got, like got a little baseball, baseball going baseball on. Game. You yeah. never use that thing for your own personal use? You ever put anything up? <laughs> Bonnie, you know, on, only the only time we've really ever used it for that, uh, we did not do that this year, is – our team camps were right there always at the 1st of June. And uh, the NBA finals were usually going on during one of those night sessions. And we would put the finals up there while the camp was going on. You can kind of take a peek and see what was happening. So. <laughs> I think John Moss would ask you. Yeah, that's exactly you right. play one movie or something <laughs> up there. Now, I think, uh, you know, when we had the Boy Scouts of America every year, they come up during one game. And um, – they spend the night on the field, set up all their tents. There's tents all over the place, which is a fantastic night. Uh, but they end up playing a movie up there. And so as I'm hopefully after a win sitting in my office, kind of watching the tape, going back through it, you never know what's going to pop up on the screen out there. So I'll get to watch a movie while I'm watching the rest of that game. But that's about it. I did have one last one. It, last year, this time of year, you were talking about how Kind of a mantra for the team was to focus on details. Mm -hmm. You thought that that had been a bugaboo the year before. Do you have anything like that this year? Or is it just you feel like you kind of turned a corner with the experience some of your young guys got and just kind of, you know, go out and compete every day and get better and better and things will take care of themselves? Details has not gone away. It's still a, a vital part of what we're doing. Um, kind of our focus has been since January is, is about earning it. And uh, that's what we've uh, – placed on shirts that's what we've placed on bracelets um you've got to earn every day you've got to earn the right uh to step between the right li white lines and then you've got to earn respect and that's what our program is fighting for so uh every day we're trying to earn what we get and uh you know just like all of us do you got to show up for work and and uh make that day happen so uh, those are the things that we are talking about in public and then the other stuff is in private so, but earn it is kind of our thought. Every FBS coach has, has an urgency about his job, I realize. Um, but when, when a coach is coming off the seasons you've had the last, the last two years, how much more do you feel that, Philip, in terms of urgency and, and, and pressure personally, that kind of thing? You know, I, I think you, uh, anytime in college football, uh, that's just where college football is right now. Um, I feel very blessed and fortunate to have the job that I have. Uh, every year there's going to be pressure to go win. Uh, is there more pressure this year than any other year? I don't think so uh, for me and, and for our players. Um, every week and every year you got to go get it done. So uh, I don't look at it as being more than, than years before uh, because our goal and our hope is to go out and win every game that we play. And so that's going to be our focus as we approach the season and continue to, to get better. Coach. How do you see the, uh, the the significance of the signing of the OSU series? You know, I think it's probably a great series for for both schools. I like at least in this series we've got some some home and home parts to it. Um, I think it's always beneficial for us to get a chance to to play an Oklahoma State here at home or an OU at home. I'd love to play Arkansas at home. You know, some of these uh, closer universities. You know, from a fan base from a from a, just the love of college football, the old rivalries that kind of used to be around, uh, it's always great when you get an opportunity to, to step back on the field with those teams and, and know that you're going to have a chance to do at least one at their place and one at your place and, and see what it's all about. But I think the fans love seeing those games, and we're going to continue to keep scheduling them. <laughs> well, they haven't agreed to. I'll say that. 
we've uh, we've posed questions. Let's just say that way. Anything else for Coach? Y'all good? All right. Thank y'all. Appreciate it.